Hey guys and welcome to Functional Print Friday and welcome back to my shop. So on the bench this week is a project that I think is going to be pretty straightforward, which is good because I'm going to be super busy this week working on the solar install up in the barn that we've been doing a bunch of prints leading up to. And I picked up this box for that project because mainly it had all of the equipment already mounted on a DIN rail in an enclosure that I need. And there's actually a lid that goes on this guy as well with a door that opens up that we can see just the faces of the equipment mounted on this DIN rail in here. And this is, uh, this is a DC uh, circuit box and these are fuses circuit breakers, and then lightning surge arresters. And there's two full sets because I'm actually gonna have two separate circuits coming down from the solar panel. It's a low voltage and a high voltage circuit, which I'll get into a little bit more when I go over the whole uh, solar install in a future video. But just know for now, this is gonna be two completely separate circuits. And I've already done some disassembly on this box by removing everything here from the bottom. Uh, the bottom of this was all MC4 connectors and cable glands for the incoming and outgoing connections. And I'll put a picture up here on your screen of what this guy originally looked like. So while this box has all the components in it that I wanna use, uh, I don't really like the way that the inputs and outputs are on the bottom of this. It has the in and out for each one of these separate circuits on the bottom. I'm actually gonna have conduit coming into the top of this box and that'll work out fine because it is open underneath this DIN rail so those wires can come underneath and come into the, uh, the fuse inputs on each side here. Now the outputs, I guess we could have used the original locations and I could have even probably left the cable glands in there, maybe capped them off or something, but that's not going to look great. And we'd then, I guess, be using this pair of holes here and this pair of holes here, which doesn't make the best use of space here on the bottom of the box. Also, they've marked all these. And in fact, it looks like this is probably laser marked. But imagine this up on the wall. Unless you get your head all the way up against the wall and look straight up, you're not actually going to be able to see any of these. So what I'm thinking is, what if we design a plate that goes on the bottom that would not only block off the holes that we don't need, but also give us markings for the two outputs that can be read both from the bottom and from kind of the front. So if we have maybe those markings at like a 45 degree angle, maybe we could even color code them. And I guess we could choose, there's no point in making additional holes in the bottom, but we could choose which holes we want to use. Like we could make the two uh, the two pairs here in the center are outputs, or I guess actually it probably make more sense to do maybe these two holes and these two holes. And then we'll just cover the rest up. So the plate would maybe have like an inset, uh, you know, sort of short pin that went into the holes. And that would not only align the plate, but effectively block off those holes as well. And you wouldn't even see that from the top. We'd make it just like a flush part on the top. So I think the next step is to get some measurements for the size of these holes, uh, the position relative to each other, and just to kind of make sure that we make our plate large enough to cover up all of the existing markings on here. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get this into CAD, get it designed together, and I'll bring you guys back. All right, and here is the design that I came up with for this. And whenever I'm modeling something like this that's designed to fit up against another part, I'll often model the other part first. In this case, I skipped that because I figure we really just need to fit up against the location of all of these individual holes. So as long as I have the position of all the holes correct and I have a rough idea of how far beyond that I want to come uh, to still clear the corners of the box and to cover up that existing text, we should be okay. And then from there, I just extruded up on the ones that we want to basically block off those holes and then extruded straight through for the holes that we still want to be able to pass through those MC4 connectors on. I angled the labels here and made them about as large as seemed practical to do so that we can hopefully see these. So here's the, this face here will be up against the bottom of the box. So looking straight on the box, we should be able to read these just fine. I could have probably wrapped the color up a little bit further, but I think that'll give us the visibility we need. Plus these MC4 connections are gonna be keyed anyway. And then that color wraps around the bottom and we should be able to read this. So and this would be if we're looking directly up to the bottom of the box. Uh, they should be perfectly readable from there as well. I often get asked how I do the coloring for the letters and for color key parts like this. And if I zoom way in, you can see I've extruded just slightly down on these surfaces that I want to be different colors. So same thing for the letters up here. That's extruded down 0.1 millimeters. So the slicer is not gonna interpret that as a separate layer. Although even if it did, that's not really a problem, but 
The edge tool in the slicer for coloring or changing the filament will allow us just to click in each one of these and fill these with the color that we want. That way we don't have to export separate geometry to color these. I find for designs like this where I really just want a contrast in color that that's the quickest way to achieve that. And I did shade them here in CAD as well just so I could kind of get an idea of how it's going to look. But when I export this, it's just going to be a plain solid STL. And then I'll, I'll use the edge tool for coloring in the slicer, in this case Bamboo Studio, and just click on each one of these to color them. So I'm going to get this sliced, uh, get it printed out, and let's see how it fits. All right, our test print is complete, and this might actually be the final print. Everything came out really nice on here. The supports came off without any issue at all. I was going to print the final one in PETG, but I printed this one in PLA because I didn't have all the colors in PETG dried that I needed for this. But you know, the reality is, even though it does get pretty hot up in the barn in the summer, this is not gonna be under any mechanical stress. So I bet you this is gonna be just fine in PLA. And since it's on the output side, I can always just turn the breakers off in this box, uh, disconnect those leads, and reprint this in PETG in the future if I have to. But I'm probably getting ahead of myself. Let's see if it even fits. Yeah, I think we're dead on. The, uh, I was a little worried that the holes weren't gonna line up because none of these measurements seem to be standard. Uh, they didn't line up with any even numbers in metric or imperial. So I don't know what they used to design the position of these holes, but I measured them all and just designed this to match the actual measurements I got. And you can see my holes there are dead on. And it keys into uh, the holes that were blocking off perfectly. So I guess let's see how the MC4 connectors look on there. All right, everything lined up and went together really nicely on this. And I got these nice and straight here before I tightened up the nuts on the other side. And one thing I didn't consider was if we would have enough thread engagement on these MC4 pass-through connectors with the extra thickness of this plate, but we are good. Uh, we actually have just a little bit extra thread sticking through the nuts. So it probably could have gone even like a millimeter thicker on this plate, but I'm happy with that as is. And these are terminated off to the output side of these breakers. And if I set this down, you can see we have good visibility of the markings on these uh, from head onto the box. And we can still see them nicely from underneath as well. So I think all that's left to do is, I think I'm going to pre-drill some holes for our four mounting points while I'm still down here in the shop. I think we could actually go put this up on the wall in the barn. All right, I put just two screws in this because I'm going to need to take it back off the wall once I'm ready to actually feed the conduit in. The conduit comes to that point right there, and there's a coupler, so I need to measure now. Uh, cut my last piece of conduit, drill this for the entry point of the conduit, and I'll bring you guys back. Well, guys, the conduit has been bent and connected, terminated the wires, and I think this is looking pretty darn good. Unfortunately, I can't actually connect anything to it yet because... We are not done on the other end of this, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this came out. And even though the lighting is not that great in here, I can still definitely make out those markings on there, no problem. Well guys, as I mentioned, pretty easy one this week. But as always, thanks for hanging out here with me for this week's design and video. And if this is by chance your first time here on this channel, this is all we do, it's all functional prints like this. Sometimes pretty easy ones, sometimes we get into some pretty advanced stuff as well. But if you're into that sort of thing, more of that functional engineering side of 3D printing, instead of just printing whatever multicolor garbage has come out that week. Yeah, check out some of the other videos on the channel. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.